Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to another video. And before we get started today, I would just like to take a moment, as always, to thank everyone who just subscribed to my channel. Welcome, it's a pleasure to have you. And thank you to everybody who's been leaving me comments. I try to read as many of them as I can. So thank you all very much, I really appreciate it. Okay guys, well, let's get into today's topic. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the order that the captain and the ship's crew gave to the passengers in order to deem who to evacuate from the Titanic in the early stages of the sinking. And that order that was given to the passengers was women and children first. When you hear the order women and children first, it makes perfect sense. You've got a giant ship in the middle of the ocean at night with not enough, with, it doesn't have enough lifeboats on board. Of course you would evacuate the women and children. That's the thing to do. But however, the order was women and children first. Now, believe it or not, there actually was some confusion around those orders during the night the Titanic sank, and I'm going to talk about that. But before I do, I want to make it clear what my interpretation of women and children first means, like if I would have been an officer. If I would have been an officer on the deck of the Titanic and the captain told me women and children first, I would evacuate the women and children, and then if there, there were no more women and children around and that lifeboat was about to go, if there were some men standing around and they wanted to go and there were empty seats available, I wouldn't care if they went. So that would be my interpretation of it. But believe it or not, this was actually an issue on the night the Titanic sank. And depending on which officer you talk to, the orders could be interpreted in different ways. The two officers who were primarily in charge of evacuating the Titanic was this man, First Officer William Murdoch, and the other officer in charge was this man, Second Officer Charles Lightoller. First Officer William Murdoch and Second Officer Charles Lightoller, they were each put in charge of one side of the Titanic and they managed that side of the ship during the evacuation. So, First Officer William Murdoch was put in charge of the Titanic's starboard side or right side. Second Officer Charles Lightoller was put in charge of the Titanic's port side or left side. And each one was in charge of managing those lifeboats and getting those lifeboats launched in an orderly fashion. Now the captain's orders, women and children first, as I said at the beginning of the video, my interpretation of it is women and children first, but if there were still empty seats available and no more women and children around, I wouldn't care to let some men on. Now, that's exactly how William Murdoch interpreted the orders. Women and children first, but if there were men around, they could get on as well. That is not what Second Officer Charles Lightoller deduced from the captain's orders. He took it as women and children only. So that meant even if the lifeboat had empty seats, even if there were still some men around, he would still flat out refuse to let men on that lifeboat, period. I honestly believe this was another factor in why the lifeboats launched half full in the beginning of the Titanic sinking. Now, granted, they were worried about the weight of the boats, but you also had a bunch of women flat out refuse to leave the Titanic during the early stages of the sinking because they would have to leave their husbands behind. Now one thing I do want to make clear, the whole issue of launching lifeboats half full wasn't limited to just the port side of the ship and light taller zone. It was happening as well in Murdoch's area as well, even though he was being more flexible on the whole women and children first policy. The biggest contributing factor to that, I believe, is where they weren't telling the passengers that the Titanic was sinking. I mean, think about it from a passenger's perspective. You've got a beautiful ship, it's well lit, it's warm, it doesn't appear to be sinking, or it doesn't appear to be any problems, and they want you to get down into a, essentially a rowboat, and be lowered into the freezing dark night in the middle of the ocean. And they're telling you it's just a drill? I mean, honestly, who would want to do that? So that is one big factor in why the lifeboats weren't launched half full. But I believe that on the port side, with Light Taller being, you know, being more strict about it, I do think he just added to the situation a little bit by not being as flexible on the whole women and children first policy. As it turns out, there was only one male passenger that Lightoller let leave the Titanic in a lifeboat. As a lifeboat was being lowered away, it was deemed that the lifeboat only had one crewman in it. So Lightoller didn't have time to pull the lifeboat back up, so he asked the passengers around, are there any seamen here or sailors? One passenger approached him and said, I'm a yachtsman, I'll go if you need me to. So Lightoller told him to climb down this rope, and if he can get to the lifeboat, then he could leave the Titanic on that boat. However, on the other side of the Titanic, you've got William Murdoch just trying to get the lifeboats away as quick as possible, and if there were no more women and children around, he wouldn't care to let men on. His only goal was to try and save as many people as possible before the Titanic sank. One thing I do want to make clear here, I don't think Lightoller was a bad guy or anything. I think he just had this whole honorable mentality where he was just like, women and children only, men do not go, men stay behind, it's the honorable thing to do because there were cases where he found men in lifeboats and he ordered them out calling them cowards. So I think he had that 
you know, men stay behind, let the women and children go mentality. And that was very, very strong within him. And you got to remember, Y. Tyler never left the Titanic, so he followed his own rules. He only survived because he made it to one of the two collapsible lifeboats at the front of the ship during the final plunge. And I mean, so the Titanic left him. He never left the ship. So he did his duty as a seaman up to the very, very end. Now, Murdoch, on the other hand, we don't really know what happened to him. In the James Cameron movie, we see that he shot himself toward the end of the sinking. However, I don't believe that to be the case, and neither do Murdoch's family. Just the type of person he was, they don't think that happened. However, there were gunshots heard from Murdoch's position around 2.10 a.m. right before the final plunge. So, there, but we, to this day, we don't know what those gunshots were. It's debatable. But me personally, I do not believe that Murdoch shot himself. However, his fate is unknown. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And to all my new subscribers and everybody who's been commenting in my videos, I really appreciate it. And you know, when I was doing this video, I had this thought, and it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Just imagine you were a passenger in the lower decks of the Titanic and trying to escape that night. And you reach the top of the stairwell on the ship, and you have to choose if you're going to go on to the right side of the ship or the left side of the ship. If you go to the starboard side of the ship where Murdoch was evacuating the lifeboats and everything, and you were a male passenger, you had a shot of escaping the ship. But if you went to the left side of the ship where Light Toller was and you were a male passenger, you had almost no chance. So honestly, it was kind of a 50-50 shot if you had a chance to escape the ship if you were a male passenger when you reached the top of that stairwell. Whether you went right or left was a major role if you would escape the ship that night. All right, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you all have any other video suggestions or have any ideas or anything you'd like to say, please leave a comment below. All right, everybody. You all be safe out there. Have a good one.